Hello and welcome to the fifth live panel leading up to the 2021 edition of Jazz Ahead, which is supposed to happen in April. Part of the, our blog deals with the presentation of regional scenes, this time especially with the southern European scenes, and more specifically today uh, about the Greek uh, scene. We want to give you some insight into what is going on on the Greek scene as to who are the main um, players in Greek festivals and clubs, what's the situation for international musicians to perform in Greek, Greece, uh, and what's the situation of Greek musicians to perform outside the country. Let me introduce you to our panel. Uh, we have two wonderful ladies to share our, their long-standing experiences with us. From Athens, we have Tanya Giannulli, a pianist, composer, uh, her music uh, for theatre, film and video, has been performed uh, through f festivals throughout the world. Her compositions have, as somebody wrote, intoxicating orchestrations characterized by a European sensibility that evokes the color of the Mediterranean. So she just played two well-received concerts at uh, the Enjoy Jazz Festival in, in Germany. Journalist Henning Bolte noted, not a typical jazz cat, but an energetic and decisive player with an open and versatile musical mind. She was supposed to play th uh, this year's Jazz Ahead, if it ha had happened, but uh, hopefully next year. Welcome, Tanya Giannulli. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. From Thessaloniki, uh, though originally from, from Holland, we have Helen Kontos. She is living in Greece since uh, 1986, formed her own company, United World Music, in 1994, originally mainly dealing with Greek singer uh, Savina Yanatou, and ever since uh, very familiar with the Greek scene, as well as with the European tour circuit uh, at all. Uh, welcome, Helen. Can you hear me? Hi, Peter. Ah, hi. <laughs> yes, I can okay. hear you. <laughs> Helen, uh, Greece does not only suffer like the whole world does from, from, from the corona pandemic, but uh, from a severe financial crisis over the last years. How did that affect the music scene? Uh, how to imagine that there are still survivors? Uh, what's the situation now? How is the live music scene coping with it? It's, um, I always say, yeah. You know, uh, you, you were asking me, right? Were you yes. saying Helen? Yes, yeah, Helen. Yeah. Uh, I always say that, um, yes, the crisis uh, killed was what, whatever was left, but there wasn't really, it wasn't easy before the crisis either. I mean, live music is for, for jazz and, you know, all the listening music uh, has always been very difficult in Greece. The, the, the scene was... There was a scene with um, entertainment music, very strong scene, which probably has suffered a lot through during the crisis. But uh, all the listening music, there just isn't so much of a culture to sit in a concert hall and listen to music. Like for example, there is with theater, everybody goes to the theater and you know goes at nine o'clock and sits quiet for two hours. But in the, the music scene, uh, that was that's a little different in Greece. There's not such a, strong listening music tradition so not even, uh, the not even in in, uh, in the classical field no no it's very it's small at least that's my impression and you okay. know in the 30 40 years that i lived here i've noticed again and again that that's very uh, that's really um different here in greece uh, there's a there's a very strong uh, a theater tradition but the music um to get an audience uh, to come to a listening concert is really a challenge how do you cope with that that's your experience too tanya at playing as a musician um, uh, in greece i would agree to to some degree with helen um yes maybe classical music has a better position but in general it is not very let's say bloomed you know in general and um i think this is one of the of the of the main problems you know in the in the musical life of of greece you can go to some concerts mainly in athens and thessaloniki but apart from that, live music and live listening music, as Ellen said, is very, very, very weak. 
in, in other cities, there are no appropriate venues, there are not appropriate halls. No. It's quite difficult. And there are a few clubs only, uh, I, as far as I can see. The, um, I saw a um, note um, at the Half Note uh, in Athens, that's one of the clubs. Uh, they uh, have on their website, we have decided as today of today, March 12th this year, uh, and for f a time frame of four weeks at least, uh, to take the initiative and postpone or cancel all the live events in our premises. In the 40-year history of the venue, there are hardly have hardly been any cancellations on live events, but due to the gravity of the situation, we are obliged to suspend all our activities all our activities. That was in March, mm -hmm. that's nine months ago and nothing else new uh, is on their website. So it's been been totally closed all the time? As far as I know, yes. Yeah? As far as I know, yes, yes. Are there more clubs? Who are, not who have They closed, exist, who are yes. Open. There are a, a couple of more, but I would say they're definitely smaller. And uh, although we go not out to a different field, although there are uh, quite a lot of jazz musicians performing, uh, unfortunately, I think the audience is quite restricted and they recircle uh, themselves, you know, around the same two or three or four maximum clubs uh, in Athens. I don't know if Thessaloniki has uh, something now, Helen, maybe you know it better. Helen? Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's a very nice uh, little jazz club called Duendes in some years. Um, uh, it's it's uh, it's really nice, and they have uh, they did a huge uh, effort to have live music there. At the moment, of course, due to COVID, everything is closed. Uh, we have very strict lockdowns, and um, I, in the summer, these kind of places usually don't open either. So I don't think they've been open at all. Uh, but I'm not sure if they were able to be open in the summer maybe and what about the the festival scene in uh, in greece i know that there is this technopolis uh, festival in athens which is as far as i can see basically uh, driven by by uh, foreign embassies and uh, export offices uh, of uh, other european countries right yes, yes. they collaborate yes that's yeah and uh, but how to access these festivals? I mean, for if a uh, uh, German musician or a French musician wants to come, they contact their embassies or what? I guess they contact the festival team and then they find a way to work it out with embassies. But I would say there are some smaller, definitely, festivals in Greece, especially happening in the summer or fall, some, uh, which uh, up to some degree uh, they are international. For example, Patra Festival, Patra's Jazz Festival, they mm -hmm. always have some international acts or a uh, Syros Festival. They always try to bring some uh, artists from abroad. Um, Where is that? There are not a lot. Syros? Syros is a very nice island close to Athens. Mm -hmm. Uh, with um, with a very big tradition in music, and they have a wonderful theater, which is a replica of uh, La Scala of Milano. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually the, the festival is happening there. Uh, this year didn't happen there because of the of, co of the mm -hmm. COVID. Of course, we played we played there, and it was an open air theater, which was also nice but different. So as a musician, yeah, and they're sunny. Hmm? There's also Sunny Festival in the north of Greece, which is a very so well organized, very, very beautiful little festival. It's usually it's usually three days with jazz, jazz on the hill, they call it. Yeah, I saw that. It, it sounded and looked very lu luxury in a way. Do people listen there then or uh, is that yes. their no listening tradition uh, either there? No, no, no? they do. They do. They, they do. come. They come like 400 people from Thessaloniki will come to that, to okay. those concerts. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't yeah. that the festival where Charles Lloyd and Maria Faranduri yes. uh, performed together? Ah. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think so. Wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I had once booked Charles Lloyd there with his project with um, Trilu Gurtu and um, Eric Harland. Mm -hmm. They played their, um, uh, what was it called? I forgot. 
<laughs> that was his trio, <laughs> just with the two Yeah, it was two, a beautiful. Two drummers. It was, yes. Yeah. I yeah, had them in yeah. Berlin as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, that is a festival that is uh, well run, I think. Uh, is that how do the festivals finance themselves then? I suppose the Sani festival that is um, well basically through the this hotel resort uh, financed and through sponsors. Yes, yeah, Sani is yes, Sani is uh, financed through the resort, so it's sponsored and um, it's uh, of course I don't think they can you know they probably pay on top. I mean. Mm. And I know, I know in Patras, it's usually financed by the municipality, but also that means that the guy, the man who organizes, he's a wonderful um, program director. Uh, he often knows like three weeks before that he actually can do it. And uh, we, we talk about artists like two months ahead and start to look for them. And then, you know, the last minute, yeah. <laughs> everything goes through. Yeah. It's a crazy situation. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about Ciros. I haven't worked with Ciros yet. Mm. Yes, because I saw that uh, most of the festivals have very little entrance fees or even of uh, entrance free. So I wondered, right. uh, do uh, do municipalities or sponsors or foundations like the Unasus Foundations or Niakos Foundation, do they uh, invest in in good music there? Um, in these two festivals, I suppose not, as far as I know. Um, but maybe it happens occasionally in other in other occasions. I could not know that. Uh, I can say about my my personal uh, experience with uh, Onassis Foundation. Uh, they have supported me once to come and play in Jazz Ahead, and. Um, we are in contact, and I think um, we are, you know, in general, if I, if there's something that is uh, suitable mm. for them, they will do it again. Okay. For me, which is, of course, mm. a great, great help for some artists mm. like me who, who perform uh, abroad and need some uh, fund for the for the traveling. Mainly. So I, I suppose you. Uh perform more abroad than than in, in Greece then I do but not not due to nurses no I mean it's not but, my my but, but yes mainly this is yeah. uh, this is what I do I perform mainly abroad and less in Greece but I, I, mm -hmm. I guess this is also a personal choice because I I have chosen not to play so often in little uh, small clubs you know the, the ones that I described before the, you mm -hmm. know the ones that the audience recycle themselves in, you know, between, and I don't think that has so much to offer to me. You know, this is my point of view. Others can maybe see mm. it differently. Mm. But I'm yeah, even... the scene is extremely small. It's extremely small. It's so few clubs, and actually, the Onassis used to uh, have a beautiful cultural center where they used to also put on jazz. But right now, they have totally focus are focusing only on contemporary music, so they stopped the jazz. Uh, but the Niarchos Foundation has uh, quite a few opportunities to have live jazz, and they also start. They have also a little festival, I think, in the summer now. Uh, so that's a great opportunity. But altogether, it's very few opportunities mm. with many great musicians that are mm. more and more coming up. And uh, the only, re really, the only way to survive is to do all kind of other things, or and uh, mainly try to get gigs abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's true for for many musicians that they more play more abroad than 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 in, at home in Greece. So there is no big scene for uh, European music musicians then to to perform in Greece either, right? Yeah. Uh, apart from these festivals um, that I have limited capacities, in my opinion, and. Um, Maybe this these bigger halls like uh, Onassis or Nyarhos, I would say it's it's restricted. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you do when you when you uh, stay in Greece, uh, Tanya? You compose or uh, teach? I do both. 
I compose. I do other projects with, uh, you know, multimedia like film, documentaries, video. I work a lot on this. I also teach, of course. And, you know, I don't have only one project. Also, I have at the moment I have two or three or maybe four maybe different projects. Uh -huh. That you bring abroad. That I bring abroad. Yes. You don't I have, have my trio. Yes. Okay. I have yeah. uh, the, you know, the um, a new project, a quintet that made the, its premiere at Enjoy Jazz, a quintet uh, with Maria Pia De Vito and Michele Rabbia, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, Greek we Italian. had um, uh, yes, Greek mm -hmm. Italian, uh, mm -hmm. a wonderful uh, Greek wind player and uh, electronic musician with us, and I also have a solo piano concert and. And of course, my older projects that are at the moment not not uh, performing, but could do at any time, my ensemble mm. or the mm. Reva project. Yeah. So uh, this does not seem uh, uh, quite uh, comfortable a scene uh, in in Greece, either neither for uh, Greek musicians nor for musicians from abroad. Uh, I have the impression. That right? Yeah, I think it's true. Yeah, that's true. You know, when people ask me, um, "Oh, you live in Greece," so um, and I say, "Yeah, I live in Greece, but I don't work in Greece because mm -hmm. all my work is outside of Greece. Yeah. All these years, it's been very, very rarely. And I would love to work here. I would love to do things here, but it's very rarely that the opportunity arises to do something. And also, I have every few years I've tried to take initiative to get something going from my initiative, but you know, it always, it's, it's uh, not possible. Yeah. So then we only can, can recommend uh, Greek musicians for the European scene. Therefore, uh, Helen, you, you made a, a list of videos uh, of actual Greek artists, uh, because talking about music is not as good as listening to the thing itself. Uh, you, can, you can follow that list uh, on YouTube uh, and uh, you will see it uh, in the in the Facebook commentary, I think. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for your insights, and uh, hope do you stay you stay safe and sane, and the thunderstorm in Athens will go over. Uh, thank you very much, Helen and Tanya. Thank you, Peter. That was it for thank today. Thank you, Peter. Goodbye, says Peter Schulze. Mm -hmm. Bye, take care. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.